My first paddle of the year had been on Johnson Lake, where I met Paul and Carl. They had told me where I could find the second campsite on the lake and offered to take me there. But the light was fading, so I declined. A few days later, I returned to the lake to attempt to find the campsite myself. Would I be successful? Hello everybody, Larry Ricker aka Nippy Mox here and I got my little furry companion here, Pip. It's not his first time in a canoe but it's been many years since he's been in one. He's behaving himself pretty well today but the <laughs> there's no people around. He tends to be a barker which is why I uh, don't take him out in the canoe very often, especially when I know there's going to be people around, especially out in the boundary waters. He also tends to be a runner, so uh, another reason I don't take him in the boundary waters. But I just decided. It'd be nice to have somebody along. Nice to have a dog along again. Yeah. So, out here on Johnson Lake again. Second paddle of the year. I think it's June 4th. Something like that. Beginning of June, anyway, early in June. No, actually, I think it's June 5th. Yeah. Oh well, whatever day it is. It's taken me a couple of, a couple of weeks to get back out here, but it's definitely nice to be on the water.
Still looking around for that campsite. This is one of the places I thought it might be. It's hard to find a good landing. that we were looking for. But had a nice little explore anyway. Got a beaver ahead of us here. Let me see if I can get it on the other camera. Well I failed to find the campsite. But still, very worthwhile coming out here. Any time out in the canoe paddling is a, a good time. Especially when it's dry. <laughs> Low winds. Thankfully it's gotten quite a bit calmer for the trip back because we had the wind to our backs earlier. So it's uh, kind of nice battling right now. It's starting to cool down. Almost wishing I had a jacket now. Pip has settled down in the bottom of the canoe. I don't think he's enjoying it as much as what Sam used to. Maybe if I'd started him earlier. But different dogs, just like different people, different strokes. I'm going to paddle slowly back towards the landing. It's after 8 o'clock now. Get this canoe on top of the car back home before it gets too dark. Get back home before it gets too cold. Ah, <sighs> oh. yes. Oh. Smell of the spruce and the cedars and the pines. Oh. Just like Christmas, only without the cold. Oh, this is so nice. Unfortunately now, this time, this part of the lake, I'm starting to hear the noise from the highway. 
Didn't hear any of that back where I think the second campsite is. Guess I'm just gonna have to make another trip out here looking for it. Maybe consult with Paul and Carl again. Try to get it figured out exactly where that thing is. Here's poor Pip, shivering her way at the in the bottom of the canoe. Oh, poor guy. You're not really enjoying this, are you? Mm. You're not a canoeist. Yeah. Yeah. What should I do with the ribeye? I'm like, what should I do with the ribeye? Yo, you're here again. Yep, I'm out here again. Awesome. Awesome. My third time. Nice. I tried to find the campsite and I couldn't. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, a few. Oh, I'll tell you where it's at. Okay. So when you when you get see that point right there, Norway Point, the big round the hill with all that? the tall yeah. Norways on it. Yep. Stay on the left hand side of that, go around all the way until it starts cutting back. You'll see a big open spot on the right hand side. You're you're gonna so okay. just hit that that very far the high point right yep, there with all yep. the Norways. Yep. Stay to the left, go around that, and. Right as you start coming back to the north, you'll see a big high spot on a corner with a fire ring and a big clearing spot. Okay. That's a beautiful boat you got there. Well, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Great. Thank you. Where are you off to? Huh? Trying to find the campsite of Norway Point. Trying to find the campsite of Norway. I'm just out for paddling, for a paddle, basically. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, of course, go in the boundary waters a lot with this, but I, I uh, do videos of all my trips and stuff. So. Come on right now and say hi. Let's go. All right, we're ending up on YouTube. Right. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, best of luck paddling you. We're gonna go check down our uh, wayward. Yeah, we gotta get our sailors. They're yeah. falling off once already. So. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I turtled it earlier. That's why I'm uh, regularly I'm in the back of the boat now. Oh, okay. Nice night for sailing, anyway. Oh yeah. Great. Wind's starting to die a little bit now, thankfully for me. <laughs> okay, this is Norway Point ahead of me here. The campsite is supposed to be around the other side of the point. Somewhere. up ahead of us here. There's wounds I've seen this year. I'm not absolutely sure, but I think I found it. Not quite sure how to get up to it, how to land for it. Basically, right at the top of this. Cliff here.
That's this landing. And this landing over the other side. Check the other side and see if there's anything better landing. This is one of the places I was kind of looking at. It was here before, but I couldn't, couldn't see how to land. I couldn't see a good trail up there. Here somewhere. I'll try, try just beyond this big tree. See what's back in the bay here. Still not seeing a good place to land. Hmm. That's gotta be that up there. like a spot. Take it up and look at the site assuming that that's what this is.
if this is the site, it's a long carry for all your gear. Apparently it doesn't get used much because there's not much of a trail. Up. Oh yeah. Fire grade is worse for wear. It's not an official fire grade even. Still, since we're on National Forest land and not uh, in the Boundary Waters, there's no requirement to stay at established campsites. Nice breeze through up here, keeping the mosquitoes at bay, which is a good thing. Well, the mosquitoes are definitely out. Okay, what do we got for camp pads? I guess you could put one up here. Over here. Lots of places for tarps. This has a latrine or not? Trouble is, there's no <laughs> no established trails anywhere, so. This isn't quite as official campsite as what the other one is. Uh, as noted earlier, the grate is not a Forest Service type grate. Also, uh, I haven't been able to find the latrine. However, I haven't looked real hard either because the further back in the woods I get, the more the mosquitoes attack me. I, uh, in fact, actually the wind is starting to die down a little bit now, so they're even getting pretty bad right here. So I'm going to get back in the canoe in a little while. But uh, lots of places to put a tent up here for sure. I like that it's so nice high up off the water. I don't like that it doesn't have as good of views up here. Of course the one major major thing that it has is it's a long ways from the road so you don't get the road noise up here like you do from the island site. So would I consider camping here? For sure I would. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to wait until the mosquitoes have abated a little bit though. Typically uh, that happens around the end of July. So this being about June 10th I think. Uh, we've got a little ways to go. Oh, about a month or so before I would consider coming out here and camping. Uh, just because of the mosquitoes and the black flies and everything. 
and that's if this tends, ends up being a typical year whatever that means you know last year we hardly had any mosquitoes at all because it was so dry other years if it stays wet uh, the mosquitoes will keep being a problem all the way into August so we'll just have to see how things go see how things go with my time too but uh, yeah I could see myself doing one or two nighter out here and being very happy with it the lake obviously doesn't get a lot of use out here like I said you're away from the road noise you're up high, so if you get any kind of a wind at all, it's going to keep the bugs at bay. Uh, not the best of landings. Kind of hard to get up from the landing to the site. But, you know, you take what you can get. So, I'm glad I finally found this site anyway. and uh, checked it out. If I do camp here, I'll probably, I would probably put my tent right up over in there. Catch the maximum amount of breeze. Be right overlooking the lake. Yeah, that would be, and it's nice and flat. So, nice place for the, for the tent. And like I said, Plenty of places to put up a, uh, a tarp here. So, yeah, finally found the site. There's no wonder I had a hard time finding it because the fireplace isn't really all that visible from the water because it's so high up. Not much in the way of. Uh, obvious places to land either which is another thing I was looking for but of course since the site doesn't get that much use you know a lot of the clues are not uh, are not there so, I'm going to get back on the water, away from these mosquitoes, paddle around a little bit more, enjoy myself. Like I said, the wind is dying now, so the paddling is going to get better. Of course, mostly, mostly now I'm going to be going with the wind anyway, so whereas I was going mostly against the wind on the way here. And there's the canoe. This wasn't too bad of a landing. It's not all that obvious. Pip, who appeared in the first part of this video, was suffering from chronic kidney disease. We knew he didn't have very much more time with us, which was partly why I took him out for a paddle. I thought it would be a treat for him to spend some time with me. Sadly, he didn't enjoy it as much as I thought he would. His health quickly went downhill. On July 5th, at the age of 14, Pip had to be put to sleep. I am sure he is now joyfully romping with Sam. Ironically, it was either July 5th or 6th of 2008 that we first brought Sam and Pip home. Together they brought 14 years of joy, happiness, and love to my wife and me. Both will be sorely missed.